Hello YouTube, my name is Brianne Steffi, coming at you on one of the frizziest hair days I've ever had in my whole life. But I'm here to show you how I make these fabric pumpkins here. I've been making them for about three years now, and this is gonna be a very detailed tutorial. So if you're interested in learning how to make these, keep watching. All right, let's talk about fabric. I have used a ton of different kinds of fabric for this. I've used canvas fabric, stretchy fabric, knits, woven sweaters, cotton, and they've all worked pretty well so far. I do think that as long as there's a little bit of movement to the fabric and it's not super stiff, you can use it for these pumpkins. If the fabric's a little bit more stiff, it's not as round and curvy, but they still look pretty cute. So I say just go for it as long as it's not too stiff. So what I think is one of the most important tools in this project is this extra long needle. I got this set on Amazon and they are such a game changer for this project. And you'll see at the end why, because it's way easier to put this long needle down through this big pumpkin instead of having to push this little yarn needle through. It can be kind of scary, but it's doable. You'll also need some embroidery floss for the loops, which you'll see at the end. You could use yarn too, just make sure that your needles go with whatever size thread or yarn you're using. And I'm also gonna be using an extra thick and strong thread. I've used a bunch in the past, and as long as it says extra strong and it's some sort of polyester cotton thick blend, I think you'll be good. It just needs to be strong enough because you'll be tying knots at the end and you want to make sure that it doesn't rip when you're gathering that pumpkin. You'll also need whatever cutting tools you want. As long as it gets you to cut your threads and a rectangle, you are good. You're also going to need some polyfill to stuff it and whatever you want to use for a stem. I use sticks that I have found outside and I just cut them up. You can use felt rolled up or you can buy a pumpkin stem online on Etsy. I've seen clay ones and real ones. Okay, now let's cut these bad boys. So you're gonna wanna determine your height first and then you're just gonna double that. I like to cut mine seven by 14 for my small ones, nine by 18 for my large ones. And I have done some extra large ones that were 12 by 24 that were a really cute size, but it makes a huge difference to have the large needles because it's nearly impossible to do it without them. So let's get cutting. I want my stripes to be vertical going up and down. So I'm just kind of getting my fabric in the right place and I'm gonna start cutting. This one's gonna be my nine by 18 and I am always cutting the height measurement first just because I find it's easier to fold the fabric in half and kind of just get a big strip done at once. And here I am cutting at 18 inches and when you're done you just fold it in half right sides facing and take it to the sewing machine and make a stitch about a quarter of an inch in okay all of my pumpkin tubes are finished sewing so let's get to hand sewing all right, let's get our needle ready. I made it long enough to go around the whole tube of the pumpkin and I'm not tying a knot and I'm gonna be doing a basting stitch on the inside, the wrong side of the fabric. So the seams are still facing out and just a quarter of an inch down, making that basting stitch all the way around. Okay, so my two tails are right next to each other. I am trimming the threads because I forgot to do that first. And I am gathering the bottom of the pumpkin together as tight as I can. And I'm going to make a tight double knot. And then I am going to take one of the tails of this thread, thread it through my hand sewing needle again, and I am going to make some stitches across the bottom gather 
just so that it secures it a lot better and so it makes the bottom nice and tight. Now I am stuffing it with my polyfill, trying to get it nice and plump in there. And after fighting with my needle, I have threaded it and I'm going to do that same basting stitch on top, on the outside, and just going all the way around like we did at the bottom. And then you're just gonna want to pull it really nice and tight and make a double knot. For the top, I like to stick my thumbs in there and tuck in all the seam allowances inside the pumpkin and then make my double knot. And just like we did at the bottom, I'm going to thread my needle and make a couple stitches across the top to secure it and keep it really nice and tight. And there might be some threads popping through and that's totally okay because it's gonna get covered by the stem anyways. Okay, our little pumpkin is starting to take shape. Let's add some more shape by getting our embroidery floss ready and using our extra long needles if you have them. Um, for this, I am going to cut a good chunk out and knot one end of that thread. And here's my little set here. I use the smallest one in this one, but if you are doing larger pumpkins, I highly recommend doing as long as you can because digging through a pumpkin for a small needle is pretty awful. And take your needle and poke it down through the top and out through the bottom. Pulling it as tight as you can. I like to find where my seam is for my starting point and I wrap it around, hold it with my thumb and again poke it down through the top and gotta wiggle it around a little bit sometimes to make sure you're getting it as close to the center as you can and out through the bottom and trying to pull my threads as tight as I can so that it starts to form the nice little hump on the pumpkin. And I'm just going to continue making loops all the way around, but I do like to take a little break after my third loop so that I can start to pull it and shape it a little bit more. So I hold the threads as tight as I can and I pull from the bottom the second loop that I made because it will tighten the first loop I made. And then I go to the third loop and I pull it and that will tighten the second loop and then I pull from the bottom and that will tighten the third and I continue this process all the way around making my loops tightening adjusting and just pulling until I get a look that I like and for the last step of this part you're just going to want to poke it from the bottom this time out through the top and then you can make a couple knots up top using a yarn needle and just cut the threads because next comes the stem. Okay, so I am in the middle of making a bunch of different pumpkins and I thought I would just share a little visual of the different types of fabric and how they can look. This is a nice thin woven and you can see it's really rounded and smooth. And this is a cotton linen blend. The fabric's a little bit thicker. And you can kind of see it's not as smooth, but it's still super cute. But yeah, that's the difference. Okay, for the stems, I found the top because you can see all the threads. And now I'm just taking the sticks that I cut down and I'm going to hot glue them right to the center. I like to kind of test out and see what looks best. And then I just kind of open them up and push them down as hard as I can and count for maybe 10 seconds just to make sure they're nice and secure. And there you go, the pumpkins are pretty much done. You can add some ribbons or trimmings or leaves or whatever you desire. I think I kinda wanna make these look Beetlejuice vibes. So yeah, I will insert some pictures of the finished pumpkins if you make these, make sure to tag me. I'm at Steffi Stitch on pretty much 
all platforms. So make sure to tag me so I can see what you make with this little pumpkin tutorial. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you have a happy fall and Halloween season.